Hi, I'm Thomas Blood, and this is part four of my sustainability video series. In the first three sessions, I talked about sustainability concepts and introduced a mental model we call FutureFit Framework. This describes four levels of effort or complexity to address sustainability. Level one concerns sustainable IT operations. Level two is focused on sustainable operations as a whole. And level three shows how innovation can support sustainability of products, services, and business models. And level four explores how we can transform organizations to have sustainability as a new core, a nature-based economy. And this is the one I'm going to address in this video. Now, you may be asking yourself, why am I standing in this amazing place, the Natural History Museum in London? It's one organization embracing digital transformation for sustainable reasons. But we'll come back to that. Level four's purpose is to identify and implement technology levers that can help organizations transform themselves to operate as sustainably as possible in all aspects of their business. Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of Canada from 2008 to 2013, and later the governor of the Bank of England, describes this in his book, highly recommend this book, Values, An Economist's Guide to Everything That Matters. In this book, he recommends a change, or if you will, a remembrance of values in economics, not just value, i.e. price, but what he calls mission-oriented capitalism, such change requires top-down leadership and bottom-up passion. Some companies are placing sustainability or ESG at the core of their company's mission. For instance, Signify, used to be known as Philips Lighting, is one such company. They have placed sustainability and innovation at their core. They have been carbon neutral since 2020 and soon will be a zero waste company. They have multiple ambitious goals aligned to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This is their strategic compass. Another example is Arup. They have a stated aim that is to serve society and deliver meaningful work for a more sustainable development within the built environment. They have committed themselves to the 17 SDGs, prioritizing environmental regeneration, biodiversity, conservation of resources, for a stable economic growth and for social value. Loss of biodiversity is one of the external costs not currently captured in the financial accounting methodologies. So I hope you'll allow me to go a little deeper on this particular topic. Biodiversity defines the richness of the natural world, including the number of species and the ecosystems in which they thrive. According to a Cambridge study, an estimated $44 trillion of annual economic output is entirely reliant on nature. Just think about that. And should these systems begin to fail, it would have catastrophic consequences for the global economy. The Task Force on Nature-Related Financial Disclosures, also known as TNFT, is developing a market-led science-based framework to enable companies and financial institutions to integrate nature into decision-making. Organizations are beginning to evaluate the materiality of biodiversity of their operations, and technology holds one of the keys to making this happen, and to understand how to mitigate or adapt the impact on biodiversity. This is the next big challenge that companies and governments will begin to tackle on the heels of getting a grip on carbon emissions. The Natural History Museum in London employs 350 scientists, which represent one of the largest groups in the world studying and enabling research into the natural world. The Natural History Museum is bringing together a broad range of UK biodiversity and environmental data in one place to help these scientists build on scientific understanding of the UK biodiversity and environment. This encourages more integrated cross-disciplinary research and it drives forward science-led nature recovery in urban spaces. The intention over time is to capture UK biodiversity and environmental data to create a representation of the UK's biodiversity. The Natural History Museum, five acre site just next door here in South Kensington is being transformed into a welcoming and accessible and biologically diverse green space in the heart of London. They aim to use the new outdoor galleries to be a place for people to learn about the diversity of life on Earth and how our planet is changing over time. They will also showcase the museum's scientific research. And there are many use cases and possibilities that will benefit from government and private sector support to accelerate a twin transformation, a digital and sustainable transformation. For instance, in agriculture, agriculture remains one of the least digitized industry segments globally. Farmers, regardless of the farm size or location, they all face the same challenge. Pests, yield quality, quantity, tackling climate change, 
and they need unique solutions to address these issues, to manage any risks of their farms and produce. According to a McKinsey report, if connectivity is implemented successfully, the industry could generate $500 billion in additional value to the global GDP by 2030. Smart islands are another great example. Due to their size in isolation and their dependence on fossil fuel imports, the cost of electricity generation on islands can be 10 times higher than on the mainland. And they are subject to more power outages. Islands have always sought to create a sustainable environment for their populations They've had to use ingenuity, collaboration, and civic will to make it happen. And often, they leverage innovation technology. Islands can be viewed as living laboratories of what could be scaled up from mainland communities. And as the world responds to the energy crisis, islands can show a path for overcoming energy challenges. The Greek island of Naxos is a great example. This is designed in collaboration with 20 Greek and international companies the Smart Island Project was developed with the support of the Greek government, local authorities, and the U.S. Embassy. The project will introduce smart solutions for mobility, for primary health care, and for the transport of goods such as vessels and monitoring of vessels and reporting from a coastline tower. And very interesting, the delivery of blood samples and medical supplies via drone. In tandem, existing infrastructure such as the local marina, the energy grid, and the water management systems will be upgraded using Internet of Things solutions and smart infrastructure management systems. Madeira is another example, one of my favorite places. It's an archipelago in the Atlantic Ocean, and they have positioned themselves as a testbed for technological innovation with smart energy as one of their core fields of experimentation. It is a self-sufficient island with no electrical connection to another landmass and is well on its way to meeting its target of producing 50% of its electricity from renewable sources by 2026. This includes solar, wind, and hydropower. I hope I've inspired you to think about sustainability as an opportunity to create a new world more in tune with nature by harnessing the power of digital technologies to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, as the UN mandated. I will leave you with a few actions that you can take. Number one, measure and understand your sustainability data. Number two, analyze ways to optimize your operations. Number three, implement the necessary changes and then rinse and repeat. And number four, develop or invent business models, products, and services that meet the needs of the present without compromising the future. And I want to thank you again for your attention, and I really encourage you to come to this amazing place in London at the National History Museum if you get a chance. Thank you so much.